Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to cover a very hot topic down here in the south. How to properly trim and prune your crepe myrtles. We did this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago about um, the improper way to prune your crepe myrtle and y'all went bananas. So we are actually standing in front of our house. This is our front yard and we have three of the Natchez crepe myrtles. Now the Natchez are the ones that produce those nice big white blooms and they are huge. Natchez can get 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide. So I wanted to come here and show you first what a properly pruned crepe myrtle looks like. So you can see that the trunk of this guy is pretty massive. These are only, gosh, maybe 12, 13 years old and they have grown. They love this spot, but they, you see that we have about five main trunks down here at the bottom. So you want to make sure you have odd numbers of your trunk. Notice that this has the gorgeous um, bark that peels off. That's another great attraction for crepe myrtles is just the gorgeous bark color on here. So if you improperly prune your crepe myrtles, you will not get that. So you see there's not a lot of small spindly um, twigs around here, the little branches. They are all nice and big. When you go up, the tree goes up and has a nice big canopy. A good rule of thumb I learned from, if you're a fan of Southern Living Magazine, Grumpy the Gardener, love that guy, he's fantastic. He says, if a bird can fly through your crepe myrtle, it is perfect. You don't want it really clustered. So this is a great example of what a properly pruned crepe myrtle looks like. Now, let's go and actually prune a crepe myrtle. So now we have moved back here to the back of our house where we have three crepe myrtles that, bless their hearts, they need some help. So this is a great tutorial on um, how they should not look and how we're going to actually fix this. So for whatever reason, these varieties of crepe myrtles, and I cannot remember what they are, are really, really bad about producing suckers. Suckers are all of these little sticks down here come in shoots coming from the bottom. You do not want this. Just like those Natchez is up front, we want to have three to five main trunks. There are the main trunks in here, but the suckers have taken over. I haven't pruned this probably in like two years and you can see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those guys. Now, some of the main tools that you're going to need to prune your crepe myrtle for the little small branches, just a good pair of little hand pruners. If you've watched me before, you know I love these. Um, so get a good quality pair of hand pruners. You will be like your extra pair of hands. You'll love it. For the bigger pieces, we're going to use these lobbers that will get all of those suckers on the bottom. Now, if you were to have some really big ones, if you had, I mean, if you wanted to use a chainsaw, you could use a chainsaw, but really you shouldn't have ever let any of those branches get big enough that you really need to use a chainsaw. So both of these will take care of it. Now, when you're pruning it, come all the way down. I'm going to have to battle the weeds and the, all the stuff. You're going to want to prune as close to the trunk of the tree that you can possibly get. And you're going to... <laughs> this is a tough one. I'm battling the tree. It, it, ah, okay. We got it. All right, so you're going to prune all of these guys out. So here we go. This is what Christine does. Her video montage. You can see what a major difference just cleaning up those suckers has made. Now this is where the artistic ability, you've got to kind of channel your inner artist and you have to ask yourself, 
do I want to leave this limb on here? So I'm going to say, no, we're not going to leave this guy on here. Why? If I take him out, I'll have three good main trunks. And if you'll notice, this guy's like going off to the side and it makes the tree look unbalanced. So we're going to go ahead and take him out. This will be interesting because that's a big guy. I get the angle right on this one. <laughs> you know, gardening's a workout. It'll get your heart rate going if you do it right. And it also works your muscles. You know, when you're wrestling a tree like this and you gotta use good lovers. <laughs> Jenny won. <laughs> All right. So now we're pretty much done using the big guys. And you can see, I mean, look how tall those limbs were coming up off the bottom of this tree. Um, so that is not good. That was sucking up a lot of energy on the tree. Now, I didn't tell you, the perfect time to trim your crepe myrtles is really right now. It now is late February here in North Carolina and late winter is the perfect time to trim your crepe myrtles. Um, they bloom on new growth, so it's totally fine. You're not gonna be cutting off any blooms. You're just trimming it up, making it look good. So now we're gonna use our little clippers and you're gonna come in here and you're just gonna trim up any little short limbs that are coming. Sometimes they'll just snap off. Um, crepe myrtles will do that a lot, but use your little clippers. It kind of saves your hand. Again, cut as close to the branch as you can get. You don't wanna leave a big stem out you want to cut it as flush as you possibly can and again you're just going to go through and you're just going to kind of clean it up and you can tell that this bark is coming off so again it's a great tree showing us lots of pretty foliage like this guy right here i'm going to go ahead and take him out any branches that are kind of sticking out um, impeding the airflow you want to get rid of anything that's at least four feet low you want to take out um, if you have branches that are crossed rubbing take those guys out it's really kind of at this point an artistic what looks good to you clean it up make it look happy it's like a haircut for a tree you know think of it that way you're not amputating the tree you're just simply cleaning the tree up um, probably I'm gonna go ahead and take out this guy too, right here, just this limb, because it's, it's awful close and it gets kind of cluttered up there. So I'm gonna go back to my big lobbers and cut this off. So you'll know how to, to put your lobbers in here so that you get the most flush cut. Boom, done. All right, so you can tell that she is a much happier, prettier, more attractive crepe myrtle now. Remember, you want to get rid of those suckers, the limbs that are crossing each other, or the little tiny limbs. Do not take your crepe myrtle and cut it straight across. Don't do that. Don't give it a flat top. It's called crepe murder. We don't believe in murder around here. So trim it, don't murder it. Why do you not do that? Because, it, it, yes, it will bloom. Every year you're gonna get blooms if you do that, but you're gonna produce one, a ton more shoots. Just like it had a bunch of suckers down here, if we were to come in here and just chop it off, you're gonna get a lot of baby suckers coming from that cut. And those limbs are gonna be very small. They're not gonna be able to handle the weight of those big blooms. So you could get floppy, especially if you have storms come through, wind, it's not gonna be as strong. Also, you know, buy the crepe myrtle for the size of where you want to put it. We had those Natchez's up front of our house. That's great. They are a good distance away from our house. They accent the house. We would never plant those right on the corner of our house. It's just not a good idea. There are crepe myrtles that come in every shape, size, and color. So make sure that you pick one that is the right size for your space. If you want to put a crepe myrtle up in front of, like right in front of your house, great go for it but make sure you get one that doesn't get 30 feet tall maybe you only need it 8 to 10 feet tall or you want the dwarf ones that only get 3 to 4 feet tall so just educate yourself 
on the different types of crepe myrtles out there come to us and talk to us say hey i really want to create myrtle um, i want it to go in this space which would be an appropriate one to put it there so that's a great thing to do talk to your local nurserymen and they will be able to recommend to you the appropriate crepe myrtle for the space that you're looking at i hope this has been helpful and informative i hope that you know, now know how to properly prune a crepe myrtle and we appreciate you and thanks for gardening with creekside <music>